What do you think would happen in a pre-dawn raid between the FBI and an American prepper who didn't have any idea that he was being surveilled by the FBI? Well, it turns out the inevitable. That American prepper thought he was being home invaded. Next thing you know, well... Here's the story. Turning now to a Fox 16 News update. We have new information tonight following yesterday's shootout between a Little Rock Airport executive and ATF agents. Tonight, for the first time, the brother of the man who was being served that search warrant is speaking out. Our Katrin Asaf spoke on the phone with Matthew Malinowski, the brother of Clinton National Executive Director Brian Malinowski. He says right now they're in the dark and they want to know what happened yesterday morning. It just doesn't make any sense to the, the, the way they did it. One day after this quiet neighborhood in West Little Rock woke to the sound of gunshots, Brian Malinowski's brother, Matthew, is sitting at an attorney's office thinking of what to do next. I think the next thing is go to the house. I take as many pictures as possible of all the damage. Malinowski was the subject of an ATF search warrant early Tuesday morning. The executive director of Clinton National Airport caught in a shootout that left one agent hospitalized and Brian on life support. He was mortally wounded. Uh, he, was, he was shot in the head with a high caliber weapon. As evidence is collected and neighbors adjust to the shock, Matthew is holding his own investigation. Right now, we were trying to gain the truth and facts. Trying to figure out why his brother was targeted. Brian has no incentive to do anything illegal. And what led agents to break in the way they did? The ATF should have never raided him like they did. They could have thrown tear gas in there. They could have thrown a shock grenade in there. They could have just said it with air horns, hey, get your tail out here. We're the ATF. While Matthew says Brian collected weapons, guns, and coins at his home on Durance Court, he says he's never been in trouble with the law before. And with no word from law enforcement on what exactly was in that search warrant, Matthew is left planning for an uncertain future with more questions than answers. I'm confused. I'm tired. I'm, I'm living on adrenaline at the moment. Katrin Asaf reporting. Matthew also telling Fox 16 they will pursue litigation as much as they can. In fact, he met with attorneys today to see what can be done. He also said Brian's wife was next to him during that shootout. An ATF agent was shot as well, and we're told they're expected to be okay. We begin tonight with breaking news in the shootout between ATF agents and the executive director of the Little Rock Airport. A redacted affidavit now revealing the ATF was investigating Brian Melanowski after guns and separate crimes across the country were traced back to him. Officials at the airport confirming today that Brian Melanowski has died. He served as the executive director at the airport for the past eight years. ATF agents went to serve a search warrant at his home Tuesday morning in West Little Rock. At some point, shots were fired, injuring an agent and Melanowski. According to the affidavit given to us by the U.S. Attorney's Office, Melanowski purchased more than 150 guns between May of 2021 and February of this year. The affidavit says at least six of those guns were later recovered in separate crimes across the U.S. Three more were brought in undercover purchases by the ATF. Now, during the course of the investigation, agents learned Melanowski was selling guns without a proper license and without doing the proper paperwork on those that he was selling them to. Through an attorney, the family of Brian Melanowski released a statement calling Melanowski a, quote, gun owner and enthusiast. The statement goes on to say in part, quote, we do not understand the government's decisions which led to a dawn raid on a private home and triggered the use of deadly force. For now, we will wait for all of the facts to come out. You know, we have fun here on It's Too Late. But you know what's not fun? Being home invaded. It's never fun to be home invaded. And it should never be fun for the home invader is sparking a lot of debate on social media right now, and you'll understand why. A Long Beach, California homeowner says he has no regrets after shooting and killing an unarmed woman who said she was pregnant. This after he got into a confrontation with her and another man who were ransacking his home. When the time comes to defend yourself, you best do something. The words of the 80-year-old homeowner who confronted two robbers. I walked in on them. And they downed me. They jumped on me in the hallway. But Tom Greer says he managed to get his 22 caliber Smith & Wesson revolver. 
He says when that unarmed couple saw his gun, they took off out the back door and he followed. The lady didn't run fast as a man, so I shot her the back twice. She's dead, and they told her off, but he got away. She says, don't shoot me. I'm pregnant. I'm with a baby. And I shot her anyway. He's been attacked in his own home by intruders. He has a right to self-defense. On the other hand, he did shoot a person who was trying to get away, so he wasn't in imminent danger himself, and the law says you can't shoot somebody under those circumstances. Greer says he has no regrets and has a warning for the alleged partner in crime still wanted tonight. I shot her, so that's going to leave a, a message on his mind. And last but certainly not least is this old badass here to remind you don't go breaking into some old guy's home thinking he's going to be a victim. A World War II veteran taking matters into his own hands when a burglar breaks into his home. Evening everybody, I'm Jack Atherton. And I'm Jackie Congedo in for Cherie. Tonight that 92 year old man is talking to News 5's Brian Hamrick about killing the intruder. Brian, what did he have to say? Yeah, Jackie, well, this is a farmhouse. Uh, men apparently broke in through the back door. Seems like they thought this 92-year-old man might be an easy target. Well, that's what they thought until they got to the stop of the stairs. In World War II, Earl Jones defended his country last night. And I heard back, back, that was in the basement. He had to defend his own living room. That's a terrible, terrible way to have to live. Earl Jones is a 92-year-old Air Force veteran who worked on planes, including the Enola Gay that dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Thieves targeted his farm at least three times recently, stealing guns, money, even cattle. This time, Earl woke up when he heard intruders in the cellar. I said, somebody down there, so I got my gun, come in, I sit right, sitting right here, and he, I heard him when he started up step. Earl waited with his 22 rifle until the intruders were just on the other side of his basement door. He kicked the door, and as soon as he got inside, it was all over. He 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 came up. So it's this goes to the basement. He came up through here. Yeah. Well, he kicked the door open, and I said it was all over. Earl fired a single shot and hit 24-year-old Lloyd Adam Maxwell of Richmond, Kentucky, in the chest. Police say Maxwell was carried off by two others, Ryan Dalton and Donnie Edibnett. They put him in their car and took off, stopping here on Courtney Road to call 911. Kirk Snyder saw what happened next. I saw this kid in the yard here, and my neighbor was uh, checking on the other kid in the car, I guess that got shot, and he took his pulse and said, you know, he's dead. Maxwell was dead in the car. Earl Jones will not be charged. And those two other suspects, they're charged with burglary and tampering with evidence. Reporting live, Brian Hamrick. I believe the moral of the story tonight is you're never too old to defend yourself in your home. You're the king of your castle. Unless, of course, the FBI comes a knocking. And then, well, you'll be pushing up daisies. I'm still eating red meat, you freaking WEF bastards.